to Unmuted. We got your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and spicy news. That's absolutely right. And we're going to present all the goodies we've gathered, which we will discuss. And I'm with Lisa, so likely argue. But luckily for all of you, there is a mute button, and I can shout her out. That wait, shut her up. Yeah. What? Wait, what? No, right. remember, we <laughs> like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting. Just, just spitting. Uh, <laughs> let's get right to it. All right, let's kick it off our stories with some big news. Astralis is breaking away from its parent company, Refresh. Both orgs confirmed the news on Friday, with Refresh stating that this has been long in the works, but a leaked email shows that Astralis players have pushed this breakup for months. This is allegedly because the players were unhappy, they were not competing at big tournaments, and being forced to compete in much more casual tournaments like the Blast series. Mm. Ooh, Brody, how do you think going independent will affect Astralis? So this is funny because I remember us talking about this before, yeah. uh, how like, oh, the, the team saw it as good that, you know, they didn't go to all the events because you needed the team to rest. You yeah. needed them to focus on the big events. Publicly, that's what but, they yeah, said. Yeah, that's what they said. But then they were also <laughs> sending them to a bunch of smaller things like the Blast series. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm thinking, no, you know, I think this is now the Astralis org wanting to like keep the prestige of them winning, right? Basically like, oh, if we just go to smaller events, we're guaranteed the wins oh and it will keep God. that going on. And now I'm starting to believe it a little bit more with the fact that, you know, the players aren't happy with this. They're like, no, actually we want to go to these big ones. We wanted to compete at these. And I'm starting that's to maybe think that's what was going theory, on right back there. there. Yeah, but I feel like it's not that tinfoily. Like no, I feel like that's- I never even thought of it that way. And also we got to note that Refresh actually owns the Blast Pro series. So like they want to keep Astralis, who was the top team for a while, under their own like yeah, course, tournament, yeah. Only, uh, yeah, which is amazing. Now we see Team Liquid rising. Now that Astralis isn't competing as much, yeah. making way for a new brand. But Astralis is like, as pro players, you must be so frustrated because obviously you want to be the best, right? That's why yeah, you yeah, play. Yeah. So it's great that now with the they're branching out that they can actually control which tournaments they play in. Um, but now I, I, I can't. I just can't believe yeah, it. Yeah. Like this is such a big eye opening. Winning, story. winning is fun, but winning's not at fun when you're only beating you know lower teams teams yeah. that you know you're going to get the win over right so i would rather as as a pro sure maybe reduce the amount that i'm going to that that does make total sense yeah. but i still want to go to the big ones i still yeah. want to compete at the tournaments where all the other best players are at because if I'm not beating them, how do I know that I'm actually the best? So no, I'm just true. beating, you know, these teams that are like B tier teams. I wonder if other teams are now gonna take this and like want the same. Like they might start rioting against their orgs, being like, Everyone's yo, right. it's all falling apart. Yeah. Esports is falling this apart could be in the like CSGO a huge scene. Huge watershed moment for you know CSGO. Possibly. Teams. Now I, I think that team's still gonna do fine. Yeah. I mean they're still amazing, but it, it will be harder without that support behind them. Anyways, in other CSGO news, Vitality is under fire from some in the community over its performance at a recent tournament at the ESEA. Global Challenge, the French team fell to Furia in the semifinals after not taking the match seriously. Vitality players had given interviews saying that they were playing for fun at the event as they wanted to focus more on bigger tournaments like IEM Chicago. Lisa. Wait a second. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, that, here's the thing. So why even just go? Like, do you think it's okay for them to have fun? I I would say so. Like, you, you got to play video games to have fun. You can't, you got to enjoy what you're doing. Whoa, 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 But is it whoa. disrespectful to those tournaments? Totally. Like, obviously games should be fun, but this is beyond on games now. This is an eSport. This is a it's professional tournament. Right. Yeah. So it's funny because it just comes after the last story where, you know, we have the Astralis team wanting to be more serious with it, where <laughs> you have this team competing and they don't want to be serious with it. They take the spot from other teams that would have liked to compete seriously and, you know, like with the pot of money and also like, why are you competing if you're not going to take it seriously? Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, I like the honesty. At least they weren't just like, <laughs> I, or yeah, ADC. well, you know, we tried our best, just wasn't our day today. Uh, we just couldn't make it. Th They're like, no, we just we didn't really give a crap like we were just having fun with it but i do think that is important i think there's i think there's a side to everything like you know maybe don't go to that tournament but at the same time if you're not having fun why are you doing it in the first winning place winning is fun brody winning is fun but having fun is also fun <laughs> Wait, is it? No, I bet you someone's gonna get in trouble. Uh, the team Vitality, I bet you someone's gonna crack down on them for saying that publicly. Because I don't think that's Likely. a good look. That's not a good look for a brand. Well, for your org, yeah. yeah or, org. or maybe they're gonna start to say, hey, we're gonna have our teams not compete in as many tournaments too, because this Roster is what happened. changes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all just booted. Yeah. I don't know if it's gonna go that drastic, but I, I, I do see Vitality maybe taking a step in and saying, hey, uh, we, 
we need you guys to like not do that, so we're just not gonna send you to these tournaments. Let us know the tournaments you actually want to perform in and that you're actually going to perform in. I don't know. And, it, and it I can see. It sounds like BM. It sounds like, you know, maybe, you know, when you lose, when you're losing in a game, you're just like, I didn't even try, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the classic. Yeah, it's just a, Yeah, it wasn't, they didn't actually lose, like, you no, know, on I purpose. It was just, they just weren't playing well. There you go. Vitality, guys, have some explaining to do. Let's move on to our next story. Registration for Evil 2019 has closed, and organizer Mr. Wizard has released the final numbers. Smash Ultimate takes the lead with nearly 3,500 entrants. The lowest registered game is Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle with 640 entrants. To no one's surprise, Melee fans are using those low numbers to say that Melee should be a main stage game. Brody. <laughs> melee guys are always going to complain. Yeah, that's Brody is a melee guy. I am so a melee prime guy. Example. At the same, so I am very upset. <laughs> are you? That, that melee isn't there. Yeah, melee. What? What the hey, dude? What the, what the hey? <laughs> Come on, like melee is the ish, man. Like, and, and it pulls some of the biggest numbers on stream yes. when it's at an event like Evo. Mm -hmm. People watch it, right? Like, people go and play it. Yes. I have personally flown out to Vegas just to play. I, I knew I was gonna get knocked out right away, <laughs> but I went to play an experience. Like, mm -hmm. people, that was just for Melee, yes, right? Like, people love Melee. I don't know why it's not there. Now, I will say, the numbers aren't that low. I mean, I think seven out of the game uh, of the games had like over a thousand entrants. Mm -hmm. That's actually really good for some of those smaller games yeah. too. Like, the fact that everyone's kind of branching out here now, I, I feel like that might just be part and due to, you know, Street Fighter having a little bit of a, a, an iffy, uh, life cycle mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Street Fighter Five. a lot of people kind of, you know, maybe branching out to other games right yeah. now. But yeah, I don't know. You're always going to have like your Blaze Blues and stuff in there, yeah. like your anime fighters. You got to have those. Yeah. So I don't see that as like getting, like Melee won't ever take that place, but mm -hmm. maybe add another slot for Melee. I well, don't know. No, but the, isn't the point is like if Melee is on the main stage, it would take away the glory from Ultimate. And obviously this is the year of Ultimate with it coming out. Like they want its own event to shine. Wait, and it doesn't Ultimate, want to share it with Ultimate Melee. Ultimate takes away the, from the glory of Ultimate. No, no, wait. Because it's, <laughs> it's not Melee. It's oh, not Melee. You're stuck in the olden ways, I'm man. Melee, melee Master Race. Uh, that's the thing, I it guess. It is a superior game. We have to we have to be real here. Melee is overall a better game than Ultimate. Ultimate is better than Smash 4, but if this Nintendo's newest game, so of course they they don't want Melee there. They want to showcase the yeah, new shiny buy thing. Buy the new game, guys. It's but all it, business at this point. But Evo should be there to celebrate the FGC, and Melee is a part of the FGC, and it is one of the best games in the FGC. And I don't see why it's not there still. So I will complain. That's fair. That's fair. But I, I don't want to kick any of the other games out. Yeah, right. Is really it. Get all out, right. Blaze Blue. <laughs> Our last story is about caffeine. No, not the addicting beverage we all chug every single morning. I'm talking about the streaming platform, which is now an official streaming partner for the LCS. Riot Games will let amateur shoutcasters and fans stream LCS games and commentate over them on the platform, which could generate a new generation of League of Legends commentators. Lisa, do you think this is a great way, or is this just a marketing push for caffeine? I mean, 100% marketing push. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little confused because I believe Twitch allows you to like restream their uh, broadcast and commentate on top of it, right? Well, so now, it's not well, exclusive. Based off what I see here, this is going they're to probably be nice. Yeah, I mean, if they're dealed up with uh, LCS, I don't see why they would allow you to stream uh, on Twitch anymore. Unless Caffeine just got screwed over in the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they didn't read their Wait contract. A Hold up. Um, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know if it's going to create a bunch of new content creators because obviously it, there's so many different mediums now, nowadays to do it. YouTube, yeah. you can literally just grab the VODs and do it on YouTube. Like, Caffeine, I don't know if this is a great it idea. It is so hard because like you you have your, how often do we see new League of Legends casters making it up to the that top, top level to LCS, right? I mean, like there are some. Like I think some. there's been a new generation kind of recently, like more, um, they bring in casters as contractors and you see mm. them mixing it up because we know with like, shocks she's yeah. going freelance so she's doing other events now so like, they are kind of bringing in new talent so I don't know if this is really a great deal for if, caffeine at least well uh, for caffeine I mean uh, they're already getting people talking yeah. about them right so like you're gonna get more people on it it's just how much of a uh, return of viewers are you gonna get on that? I've literally never stepped on a site. I've been on every other site, yeah. Mixer, YouTube Gaming, Twitch. I've been on all those other ones, but never once stepped on the caffeine, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, this th yeah. this could be a good, if they got something good, I'm gonna go check tonight, and if I go on there and they got something good, maybe I might start spending a little more time on there. Probably yeah. not, because Twitch is a great platform, yeah. but yeah. it's like, you gotta do something. Yeah. So I, I don't, I, I'm more, not. More than caffeine though, I think this is more an interesting topic regarding like how do amateur 
characters become pro, especially as a commentator. And obviously, oh, you have experience yeah. in this too. Like, how you gotta would you just do it? Okay. So this is this is a great. I, I think for the commentators themselves, this yeah. is great because they're going to get a little more exposure. There's not as many people streaming on caffeine, True. so there's they're going to be higher up on those lists, right? More people are going to see them. So I think, and LCS is specifically now looking <laughs> at this platform. So I think for the commentators, this is great. Okay. For caffeine, will it work out? I don't know. That's yet to be seen. That's fair. Anyway, let's move on because it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. Our first clip comes from Shroud and his greasy, greasy hands. For watching you handle that chicken and touch your mouse triggers me. Oh, look at that grease. Oh, yeah. Germaphobes <laughs> everywhere are crying. It's not even right that. Now. It's just the uh, the core of what it means to be a gamer <laughs> just got broken apart in so many people around the world How when they saw the that. Core? That you that you is don't not the do core. that. You do not treat your peripher you treat your peripherals as if they were an extension of your body, and you should treat your well, body you like a temple. All over your body? Only on Tuesdays. Oh, and that Tuesdays. was not Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> That's a smart. That's a mixed But <laughs> don't do that. No. Now he's got to play with that, or he's got to take the time to. Like I gotta say, I'm not, you know, a saint as well when it comes to it. Sometimes I'll grab some chips, and maybe I'll touch my controller. I'll realize though and mm -hmm. clean it off. I have paper towel by in case I need to clean it off. Right? You gotta. Convenience. Yeah, you gotta. That's why I have the paper towel there. That's no, the you only have, reason why you have paper you towel have next to your computer. You have to your peripherals okay. with respect. And, <laughs> <laughs> what I do like about Shroud, though, is it just shows that he don't give a F no. about anything. Yo, he probably uses a new mouse every day. Like, he probably gets sponsorships, <laughs> right? like, off the wall. But the thing is that it's your own grease. It's your own chicken. What's the big deal? <laughs> okay. What? It's Solid your own logic. Anyway, our someone next else's. clip comes from XQC, who gives us his opinion on influencers. There's a billion reasons to go to streaming, dude, and they go to fucking YouTube, dude, or whatever. If you say, oh, dude, I went to help people, fuck off. Yay. Yay. Nice to meet you. Oh, so it was great. such a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Posting your toes on a beach on Instagram doesn't help anyone, dude. Shut up. I don't understand a thing he just said. Okay, <laughs> I did not I'll understand help you, it. I'll help you Translate out through the Okay, so me. basically he said, if you, if you get into being an influencer and making content to help people, you, that's not why you get into it. Posting your toes on Instagram ain't helping nobody. Oh, it's helping somebody. Well, it might be helping somebody, <laughs> but, but that's, that's not, it's, he's just saying most people are just kind of putting on a face. Most uh, people, Influencers sure. are just being fake. Well, all, everyone. All those, all those popular people in the media are fake. What do you say? That's not true at all. They're all the realest people I ever met. Okay, okay, that's, that's why I nice love Instagram. Sarcasm. Shut up! Okay, everyone likes to hate on influencers, and but social media has made us this way. It's just the way of life. You have to just be media smart. You know, don't believe everything you watch. That is true. Uh oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, believe us, though. No, believe, yeah, believe us. us. We're totally one hundred percent true. We're not fake at all. Um, but I don't. I think there are people there who try to do good, and I think he is so negative. Why are people he so is. negative? He is very negative. Why can't like obviously there's a lot of people who do fake it, but let the people who want to help let them help, and it could be a mutually beneficial thing. You know, like you're donating to me, but I want to take that and help other people. Why can't everyone just be happy, Brody? Because he's XQC and he's a sour apple, <sighs> and he infects other people. It's horrible. Why do we pick these clips? I don't know. Now, now we're all angry. Bad. Now we're all pissed off. Uh, mute that guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's truly the best time of the day when we troll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things pros bless us from their timelines. First one comes from Smash Pro NBD, who wants us to truly understand what it's like to be a pro. He said, People really got to stop saying, you'll get them next time when you lose. I don't want next time. I want it now, LOL. Understand the heart and mind of a competitor. Yo, you know what? I mean, I get, I, I get it that... Everyone's people are trying to be supportive, right? And yeah. say like, hey, you know, man, we're still here. We're basically what they're saying by you'll get it next time is I'm still supporting you and I'll be cheering for you next time. So you do have to take that in. You can't just ignore people that say that. But I do get it. When you just get of a match, you're pretty competitive too. If you lose something, how are you instantly moving on the second after? No, you're probably thinking about how you didn't want it yeah. to go that way, right? That's fair. That's and that's fair. exactly what's in his mind. So if you want to say that to someone that just came off of a loss, maybe wait a little bit, wait a day, and then say, hey, a you day. know, it was great. 
Yeah, but it, you gotta let that person chill out. Okay, you know, we work in media, we cover esports, and interviewing pros after matches, especially a loss, is probably the hardest thing because you know they don't wanna be there. But you still gotta ask the questions, what do you think we should say then? As, you know, content creators, what are you supposed to say to them after a loss? Here's What's a tub of ice way? cream. Oh, you want us to bring ice cream yes. now? Really? Would you not enjoy that? Brody more. Are, are they gonna, you know what? If you just lost, if share you just tub? lost, and someone walked up with a tub of ice cream, you're gonna say no. You're gonna be happy so now. You wanna bribe them? Yeah. Brilliant. Let's do it. And then you say better, better luck next time. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We got a tweet from another Smash player. Here's what Zane had to say. People often ask how I prep for tournaments. I start my day by hopping in the shower and quietly singing to myself, Offsprings, you're gonna go far, kid. Soft enough so that no one will hear, loud enough to give me the confidence I need. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you're doing, you gotta belt that out, man. You make your neighbors hear you. That's the only way you're gonna build that confidence. Oh, but he's confident enough. Do you, you, do you have a hype song then? I feel like punk rock is just good for hyping you up, but. Punk rock is not my hype music. It's more like if I just want to like let loose. But for hyping music, it has to be something more buildy, you know? What are you, what are you doing, EDM? I'm assuming no. you step away from some R&B. Something like Eye of the Tiger, but not like that, because that's really old. You know, like it has like a nice What's like- What's wrong with it being old? No, Old nothing. music does not make it bad. I'm not saying, I just think more modern. Maybe something, you know, Latina mixing it or something like, because you know music nowadays is actually a fusion. You get dancey. Yeah, I get dancey. I want something that makes me groove. You know like when Fifth Harmony released that work song? Work, work, like that. Okay. It gets okay. in your head, but it makes you want to go like, work. I'm gonna go to work. work. No? Okay. I don't know about that. Well. I, I, I don't know about that. Brody doesn't know anything about work, confirmed. All right, for our last post, we're going to someone who probably is the last person you would think of when it comes to manners. If you hold the door open for someone and there's no acknowledgement, remind them by Dr. Disrespect. I mean, Isn't that ironic? He's still kind of, I think his remind them is getting disrespectful in their face. I guess. I, yo, I just hold this door open for you. Were you still saying anything? He's probably gonna get right up in their face. Right. No. But I did have that the other day when it's like, you, you, you want to hold the door open for someone because it's a nice thing to do, not that you're gonna get something back out of it. But at the same time, it is kind of disheartening when someone goes by and, and just like, What do you want, a pat on I the head? I had someone go by <laughs> and then their kid, so now oh. I know that kid isn't being taught manners, you know, ah. right? Like they both went by. I'm not blaming the kid, so I'm blaming the So you should whisper to the kid, yeah. you're welcome. Hey. What do you say when someone does something nice, right? I mean, don't whisper to kids. I'll, par I'll parent you better time. than your dad does. Oh my Clearly god! Clearly has no manners. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's disturbing. <sighs> stay away from parks, Brody. Stay what? Away that's from, no, no! Stay away from Jesus. kids! I don't trust you around kids ever, okay? I was just calling the dad a bad parent. Wow, <laughs> way to misinterpret. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on because it's time to get to some crowd control. We're starting off with a rare 1985 Gibson NES. Oh, whoa! What, right? I, I hope, though, that you pick it up and it only plays 8-bit sounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it's anything else, I'm going to be upset. You play you play better guitar. Would you I even try like that? I play the acoustic very casually. Okay, I feel like that would be a little difficult to hold. Like, the, the you try to lean over it's and like the corner's box. digging into your ribs. Well, that's why you get a little pouch, a little poochie, and you let it... <laughs> oh, <laughs> I do. I got my flat tire right here. Rest <laughs> it on my pooch. You just rest it on the pooch. It's a, pooch is a cute word to call it. You call it flat tire, but we like to call it pooch. I, all right. It's forever <laughs> known now as the pooch. Today I learned you guys can go home and tell your parents, tell your friends. But Look at no, my that's pooch. Really sick. <laughs> guitar. This is going off the wall. Let's go on to the next item. We've seen a lot of gaming tattoos around these parts, but this one seems a little much. Fast Lucas and others promised tattoos if Vitality won the Rocket League Worlds. All right, let's check it out. <gasps> the letters seem yeah, so the, off, though. Hold yeah, on. they're they're definitely oh like low quality. Like, I wonder what he paid for that tattoo. Why? But, it, but it's literally the roster. It's literally the roster for the team. Oh no. What if that roster changes? It will. And then, I, right? Like, I don't see any signs right now. But I don't. It's like getting a tattoo of who you're dating right now. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't. I don't get that. No offense to anybody that does that, but I don't get that. Uh, yeah, no, that is a horrible idea. Unless, I mean, he's trying to immortalize that roster, right? So even if it that changed, moment, I it's suppose. like, yeah, it's a, but like, keep it classy, guys. Why not just do the symbol? Like, you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, get Put the symbol, maybe like Put the letters, year. like, you, it's, a tattoo is for you to enjoy, nobody else to judge, but at the same time, sure. the lettering yep. was definitely a little off. Like a kid did it. Uh, Brody, yeah. don't you have Rocket League tattoos? I do, I don't do think I can roll, off? I don't think I can roll it up enough here, it's oh, too I'm tight. talking about the one on your butt. Oh, that, yeah, uh, Okay, here, that's, an, <laughs> that's another, <laughs> All another right, time. let's not talk about my butt and move on.
Right? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Our last post ends us on brilliance. Delta 2 Forest has found the cure to the monotonous mining periods in Minecraft. <laughs> This is amazing. So what he's done is he's generated a plugin Wait that allows you to mirror a second monitor to a map in game. So his second monitor, he's playing CSGO in Minecraft. Wait a second. Right? And you can also, as you see here, watch videos while you're mining as you just have the map up. Wait a second. It's brilliant. Oh my god. First of all, I've never played Minecraft before, so this is kind of like blowing my mind. Wait, wait so if he has two monitors, can he just back and forth? Like uh, well, that, so I was just thinking that too. That is a little bit of broken logic. <laughs> Wait a second. He could just look over, but it keeps it in the focus. It, okay. it does make it a little bit. I, I found that like some people tell me that they'll, they'll like watch anime while they're Play you know games. playing games or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you focus? Like, because I only have subs, right? right. So it's like, how do you like? I'm, I'd be no, like no, this no, whole that's time. That's too hard. You gotta watch the dub version. But imagine now oh. if your mini map in the game you're playing was the anime. It's just right there. You just all you gotta do is move your eyes. You don't have to move your head everywhere. You know what? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with our generation that we can't? <laughs> Focus on we can't just do one thing. thing at a time. That's, you know, that's fair. You know, the, the boring parts of Minecraft is what makes the hype parts interesting, you know? No? Ah, okay. There's some monotony. All right. All right, fine. You guys let us know what you think in chat, but that's it for Unneeded. Remember, you can always hit us up on all our socials just to say hi or send us stuff to react to. Follow us on all our socials at Squad State. We'll see you next time.